Welcome to the 9 o'clock news. I'm your host, Fred Minnick. Hey, Fred Minnick here. You're probably getting into bourbon and you're asking yourself, all right, I've tried all the majors. I've had Four Roses, Buffalo Trace. Can't get the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection or Pappy, but I've had Standard Buffalo Trace. You've had your Wild Turkey lineup. You've had the stuff from Brown Foreman like Old Forester, Woodford Reserve. Uh, and maybe you even dipped your toe out into a little bit of MGP. You've had the entire Heaven Hill lineup within reason. You know, probably a little harder to get uh, Henry McKenna these days. I know nothing about that. Uh, and then, you know, you're kind of like, now what? You know, I've been tasting all these different things, and um, now uh, I want to taste something else. Well, I have five bourbons on my table right now. I think should be up next for you. These are bourbons that will challenge you. They will challenge your palate and they will broaden your thought as to what bourbon is. Now, it's very important to note that bourbon does not have to be made just in Kentucky. In fact, in 1964, when Congress declared bourbon to be a unique product of the United States, they said bourbon can be made anywhere in the United States. Anywhere. Not just Kentucky. It's a big misnomer that's been out there for a long time. And the bottles I'm about to show you prove me right. So, first up, number one. The first bottle that you can get in the majority of the U.S. states, Woodenville. Woodenville is a small distiller in the state of Washington. They are putting out some great, great bourbon for a small distiller. And I'll tell you right now, one time in a blind tasting, they almost beat uh, Pappy in a blind flight of mine. I really believe in Woodenville. Uh, they've done great work. They were mentored by the late, great Dave Pickerel. Uh, and you can find this in most markets. They're 90 proof standard product for under 40 bucks. You might have to spend 50, depending on your taxes. It's always about how much are your taxes. Do you know how much your sales tax are for bourbon? Put it in the comment section if you do know. You might be surprised when you look it up. So, Woodenville, pick number one for you. Pick number two, Penelope is doing some great work. They're putting out a lot of cash drink products. This is their four grain. I recommend taking a gander at anything that they're putting out just because they're pushing the boundaries of some flavor profiles that I think are that next evolution in bourbon. So right now, today, a lot of people are kind of on the fence about products like Penelope, but I think what Penelope is doing is a possible evolution in the flavor profile of bourbon. Bourbon is no longer that standard caramel bomb forward uh, Kentucky bourbon style. It's got grains in it. It's got nuance. It's got herbs. There's all these different flavors that you can find in bourbon that 20, 30 years ago you did not find. And Penelope is pushing those boundaries. Speaking of pushing those boundaries, and especially in the category of grain, uh, Spirits of French Lick is a distiller that is bringing it heavy when it comes to grain. So I'm a big fan of Spirits of French Lick. In 2020, they won my best non-Kentucky bourbon, and they continue to be a top-tier bourbon for me. This is what I personally drink at home, the uh, William Dalton, but you can get any of their products, including their, uh, their brandies, their Apple Jacks. Um, really, really good whiskey. The distiller there, Alan Bishop, to me, is one of the best distillers in the country. He's the kind of guy that if the uh, the world's about to end and you have to choose someone to go with you to make uh, to make booze, Alan Bishop is who I'm picking in the in the survival mode because he will definitely he would definitely know how to make uh, booze out of a probably out of a out of a gourd and uh, using like a, some kind of stick uh, a, a hollow stick as a worm. So yeah. This, uh, what they're doing at Spirits of French Lake is nothing short of amazing, and they should be on everybody's, uh, on everybody's bar. Now, again, this whole list is not a list of tradition. It's a list of uh, bourbons that will push the boundaries for you, will help you understand bourbon in a way that's outside of tradition, 
And these are coming from all over the country. Next up is Cedar Ridge. Cedar Ridge is a distillery in Iowa. They're making great bourbon there. They're most known for their, um, their collaboration with Slipknot. Uh, however, this is a barrel pick that I did that sold out pretty quickly on Sealbox, and I just ta I taste it through a wide range of their barrels, and I know those barrels are getting put to use um, in other barrel picks. So if you can find like a Cedar Ridge barrel pick, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, because these barrels are excellent. Now their standard product that's on the shelf. I'm a little less inclined to say jump for it because it's lower in proof. Uh, I think their expression at cash strength is way better uh, than some of their lower proof options. But still, it's probably worth the flyer for you to have a, kind of in that same vein as maybe like a Makers or a, uh, a Jim Beam. But uh, if you see the cash strength or a barrel pick from Cedar Ridge, that's money. Pick it up and... Tell you what, put in a blind tasting, you might be surprised how it will do. And the last but not least I will recommend for a kind of push in the boundaries is Detling out of Alabama. Now this bourbon right here is scrumptious. I have tasted uh, almost all their products and what's happening in Alabama warehouses is it's getting up to 150 degrees in those warehouses. And those warehouses are really pushing that whiskey deeper into the wood. And I think something's happening in Alabama from a climate perspective, and Detling is really putting out good whiskey. Now they're tiny, it's hard to get them, and I don't think um, you know, you're know you gonna be able to find them easily. So it's gonna take some work. But if you're getting into the bourbon game, this isn't about like, you know, walking into a liquor store and just finding a bottle every time. There's a little bit of hunting involved, but my hope, the whole point of this list and my challenge to you is don't make that hunting all about those crazy allocated products out there. Expand your horizon, expand your palate, taste more than just Buffalo Trace and some of those standard uh, great distillers we have in Kentucky. Push your palate, taste some other things. And these are five bourbons that will get your palate and it's, you know, in the right direction to find new flavor profiles that are out there in the world of bourbon. That's gonna do it for this list. Hey, thank you for tuning in. Please click that subscribe button. If you'd like to have watched this live, like the members here, click the join button. You can see it live. I do all my, all my uh, uh, recordings live with my members. Uh, and then of course, hit the like button, but that's gonna do it for this list. Be safe out there. Remember, vodka sucks unless it's being used for hand sanitizer. Cheers, everybody.